Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to make my little 3D Amigurumi panda. And uh, the colours you're going to need are black and white and red if you choose to make a little scarf for him. You're going to need some stuffing so that you can stuff him. And uh, it's a hook only design, but we are going to use our loom just to make the magic ring. I think it's a lot easier to actually show you and visualize how to do that magic ring when I have a loom to show you. Um, I'm also using stitch markers. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use an S clip or a C clip, or you can even use a paper clip. Works perfectly well. We're going to start by doing a magic ring with six little. Um, stitches in it so take a single band and using your loom we're going to have the arrow facing away from us the open part of the peg facing away you're going to take a single band and wrap it around a single peg twice and that will give you three little loops okay and then we're going to use six bands one two three four five and six and we're going to make our first magic ring with these six bands. So take your first band and poke your hook through and you're going to just drag that through and make a little slip knot. But you're not going to do a tight slip knot, it's just going to be loose. Budge that around, do the same, keep this loop on your hook, push your hook back down and draw through your second band. And do the same again. So now you have two little slip knots and you're going to join them together by taking the first one up and over the second and push it around. Back down for our third band, join them together and push around and we'll do this for all six. And you can just put your loom to one side. You don't actually need that for a little bit now. We're just going to make his head. If you look, you can see you've got one, two, three, four, five stitches in a little circle. And the six stitches here on your hook. Now each of these stitches, and I'm going to push my hook through the first one, is going to have two single crochets in it. And that's called an increase. So take two bands, pick up your first one and drag it through that first stitch and reclaim. You're then going to take the loop closest to you up and over and then join together like that. And you're going to put your stitch marker on this particular loop here. Now, that's just, and that's just to mark where we start and where we finish. Now we're going to go through that first stitch again and do our second single crochet and that's what makes it an increase because we've increased how many stitches as we go around we're going to increase from six it's going to be 12. So go through your second stitch and again you're going to use two to do two single crochets in the same stitch. There's our first one let's go back through here's our second let's go through our third stitch I'm going to do two in there as well. Fourth stitch. This will be our fifth stitch. And this is our sixth stitch. We're back at the beginning. You're going to push your hook through that first stitch where your stitch marker is, and we're just going to do a single crochet with a single band, pull it through. And we're going to move our stitch marker onto that new stitch. Okay, so that was round one. We're going to do round two, and it's going to be a single crochet followed by an increase. And you're going to do that in a pattern. So this was our single crochet, so we're going to do an increase, which, if you remember, 
is two single crochets in the same stitch. So that was one. Let's do another one. Now we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch. And in the stitch next, we're doing an increase again. One. Two. Now we're going to do a single. Followed by an increase. Let's go back through that same stitch. Do a single, followed by an increase. Single, followed by an increase. single, followed by an increase. And then we're back at the beginning, so through that first stitch we're going to do a single crochet and we will move our stitch marker and put it on that new stitch right there. Next we're going to do four rounds of single crochet. Okay, so we're going to just do this as we be our first round, just single crochet all the way around. the beginning, we'll do a single crochet and we'll move our stitch marker to this new loop. That was our first round, let's do our second round.
single crochet. And now we can do round number three. Now you'll notice I haven't done the ears or anything yet. We're going to pop those on after. Same with the eyes. So let's do round number three. Again, just single crochet. through that first one, do our single crochet and move your stitch marker. We're now going to do round number four. Again it's just single crochet. back through that first one with a single crochet and move your stitch marker to that new loop like that. So it's a good time now um, to put this just to one side for a second and do his ears and again I'm going to use my loom and uh, do a little magic ring. So I'm taking a black band, single black band and wrap it around once and twice. Now we have to do this twice. I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five. I'm pretty sure it's only five. Let's have a look here. One, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five bands. He's falling over. Sit still. You're going to take your hook and go through and grab your first band. Pull it back. Do your little slip knot move it around. You're doing this for all five of them. Join them together 
and this time when you take it off your loom you're not going to spread them around to make a circle you're going to leave it as a semicircle So there's my five, take that off the loom. So to attach the ear, remember that this is at the back of the head. Okay, and so this is your center ring that we started, the magic ring here. Okay, now you've got your little semicircle. What you're going to do is pinch the loop that is on your hook. Pinch it so that it doesn't go anywhere. Your magic circle, I'm going to try and make this so that I can see where the center is, is here. You're going to have your ear either side of the head. So I'm going to poke my hook, this is my magic circle here, I'm poking my hook through one side, the other one is going to go the other side here. Poking my hook through one side, now I'm going to swap sides, I'm going to hold the little loop here. On the other side of the ear, you got your first stitch here, but under your first stitch you can see that there's this little loop here. There's two bands that form that little loop. This is not the first stitch, this is the first stitch above it. So you're going to grab the little bit that is not the first stitch and you're just going to pull it through and there's two loops to it through your top of your head. You're then going to move your hook to the spot where you want the ear, the other side of the ear to appear, which in my case is about here. Pop the loop on and drag it through, okay, so that it looks like this. You're then going to take the little loop that's on the end of your hook and pull it through there. Now we have to tie it off, so I'm going to just pop through a little white band on the inside and with another white band, I'm going to pull through and tie a slip knot. And then when I turn it around the other way, there's my little ear on his head. Okay, we're going to do the same. And you won't see these bands inside, so don't worry about that. Okay, so there's one little ear. Let's do the other side. Okay, so again, single black band, wrap it once and twice. We're using five black bands to make our magic ring. So one, two, oops, keep it on your hook, three, four, and five. There's my little loop that I've got to keep safe. And here underneath just is that little crisscross. That's the bit that we're going to pull through. So I'm going to pinch that little loop so that I've got that little loop safe. I don't want that unraveling. Okay, so then on the other side, this is the other side of the magic ring right here that's where it's going to go and I'm going to grab the underside of this stitch here the opposite side from where my loop is that's going to be pulled through you need to keep that on your hook okay this is going to be turned around this way the ear has to turn this way let's see if I can do that I put it in the wrong way Let's try that again. So poke my hook, get out, poke my hook through and you don't want a backwards here, pull down, okay, then keeping that on your hook, you have to work out where you want it to come out, mine's coming out here, grabbing the end of the ear and pulling it through so I have all of them on my hook here, the single which is closest to the end of your hook, goes through, grab a single white band, and this is where we do our tie-off, 
drag it through the black and the white band and tie in a knot okay so here we have our two little ears now you can sort of they can sort of flip in a little bit to turn inside as well if you want them to however you fiddle with them now what we're going to do is do a round next again with white and we're going to do a decrease and our nose is going to go on this particular round so what it is it's a decrease you start with a decrease and then it's two single crochets decrease two single crochets so we'll start here we're going to do decrease so you go through the first and then through the second like that all right take a single band draw it through both of those loops and now we're going to do two single crochets one and two and then again we do a decrease do one single crochet now on this next single crochet you're at the center of his face here see if you look down here we're going to come here so we're kind of at the center of his face and we can do a nose about here so what I'm going to do is put my hook through I'm going to wrap a black band once twice and three times and the white band that I'm going to do my single crochet before I do the single crochet I'm going to slide my black band on then I'm going to pull it through and reclaim and do my single crochet now I need to do a decrease okay so it's going to be in the middle now don't worry that it looks a bit odd don't worry about that we'll do two single crochets one two we'll do a decrease two single crochets And we have two stitches left, which means we finish on a decrease. I'm going to remove my stitch marker so I have some room. And this stitch is what we will put our stitch marker back on. Okay. So we're going to pick up our little guy again, the head. And now what we're going to do is decrease followed by a single crochet. So we'll start here and do our first decrease. Oops. Followed by a single crochet. Followed by a decrease. Followed by a single crochet followed by a decrease single crochet decrease single crochet and I'm not going to try and do a decrease on the last stitch I'm just going to do a single crochet and move my stitch marker now at this point 
and you can tell it's rather tight in here we kind of want to add our eyes and also the little bit that we're going to have whoops, as a snout I'm going to do the snout first so take your loom single white band wrap it around your peg once and twice get rid of that scungy band five bands and we'll do a little magic ring so there's one push back down two three four five and you can do six if you want it doesn't really matter we'll do six do one more and we'll take this off the loom keep that on your hook that little loop spread these around so that they're evenly spaced okay now the trick on doing this is what you want to do is have the nose poke out but you're also going to use this part to secure it to the face so what we're going to do is push our hook through the center grab the black bands of the nose and it can be a bit tricky because it wants to sort of cave in on itself so put your finger up there and hold it securely to grab these black bands and try and grab all of them for loops because otherwise you're going to end up with one slightly more stretched than the others so you have it like this and you want to have it so that the side part the loop is on the side so that we can connect it so see how here it's on the side what I'm going to do I'm going to go through that first stitch okay take another single band draw it through in a slip knot and pull tight so I have I'm going to put my finger in here I have that little thing on the front like that this I'm going to pull through so I'm going to approximate where it is on the face and I'm going to pull this band through to the inside okay like that and then on the other side of it I'm going to pull it back through so back out through here all right I'm going to stretch it and put it around the snout like this and then I'm going to do the same on the other side I'm going to grab through a stitch that's on the opposite side and I'm going to grab another band and I'm going to do a slip stitch like this and I'm going to go through on the other side like I just did find the space on the other side to grab this band you might need to make this opening let's move the stitch marker out of the way that's restricting what I can see come out I'm just going to clip it onto the outside here keep it out of my way so let's have a look at what we have in here here's my band that I just tied a slip knot in so I'm coming up through the other side I'm going to grab the end the loop that I have a slip knot in like this there it is I'm going to go back through the side that this one came out of and I'm going to pull that through like this stretch it and put it over the snout Now, obviously it looks a bit odd at the moment, there's no stuffing in it, but uh, once this is stretched out, there we go, it looks a little bit more normal. There we go. Now we have to put some eyes on, 
black bands, you're going to need two for each eye. Take your first black band, wrap it once, twice, three times and four times and do the same with another one. Once, twice, three times and four times. And you're going to slide onto, I think I've used white, I did use white. Slide on. Like that. Now you want them to be sort of evenly spaced. You don't want them all bunched up. You want it to be spread out a bit like that. You're going to find where you want them. And I've sort of done mine at an angle and sort of closer to the nose. So I'm going to go from the inside out. So here's the center, I would say, for the nose. Probably go one. And you'll just have to, it's trial and error really, to see how it looks. When you do grab it though, keep your hook, keep the end on your hook, and then find the other side. So find where you want to put it. This is the center. I'm going to go one side from the center. Pull it in. I've kept it on my hook and I'm coming out again and pulling through. So I'm going to put my eyes like that. I should have both ends on my hook, okay? And I'm going to tie that in a slip knot, like so, okay? And I'm going to do the same on the other side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Slide onto a white band. slide on to a white band and again do the same you can probably take it off I'm going to go through this side here so poke from here keep your hook on turn it round I'm going to put a white band through you can always undo this band and just readjust where you want the eye to be but I think for me that's about right like that now and it'll look better once you've stuffed it a bit as well let's go back to our stitch marker pop our hook through now what we need to do is an increase all right so we're going to change to, to black, okay? And what we're going to do is go through this next stitch here. And I'm doing a slip stitch to start with because I think it looks better when you, and I'm moving my stitch marker, when you join the colors together. I'm going to go back through that stitch again and I'm going to do a single crochet in black because we're doing increases in each of these. Okay, so that's one. Go to the next stitch and we've got to do two single crochets in this one. And two single crochets in this one. There's one. Two, two in this one, two in this one, This one. Make sure you don't miss any of the white stitches.
my second one here. I'm going to do a single crochet in this first stitch that we had and then I will move my stitch marker to this new loop like that. Spread this out a little bit like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is five rounds of single crochet all the way around in black. So let's just do that. So Make sure you go through both loops. Okay, back at the beginning, so do a single crochet, move your stitch marker, that was the end of round number one. Let's do another round, round number two. Remember I said we have five rounds to do of this. So this is number two. Move your stitch marker. See how he's beginning to form? Let's do number three.
remove our stitch marker. Okay. We'll do number four. single crochet and change my stitch marker I'm now going to do round number five now make sure I didn't skip I did skip start in the first stitch and not jump around and you could normally tell if you do because you get a gaping hole. <laughs> you don't want that. Your stuffing would fluff through rather badly. Oops. Let's try and oh my goodness gracious me relink these in the good thing is when you actually do drop a stitch it's in a little slip knot so it doesn't really go far it's nice and easy to fix Now, that was my fifth um, round. I'm now changing to white, so I'm going to put the black back for the minute. I haven't done that final single crochet here, because what I'm going to do is go through and do a slip stitch. So I've gone through that. Rather than reclaiming, I'm going to add my black stitch to it and do a slip stitch and pop my stitch marker on there. I'm now going to do four rounds of single crochet using white. But before I do that, I thought I'd put a little bit of stuffing in the face just to show you how, uh, how that's going to look. The stuffing that I use is the uh, polyfill. Let's see if I can show you polyfill. It's 100% polyester fiber fill and I got it from 
uh, Michaels. You never want to overstuff. You just want to use a little bit. And yes, as you can tell, it goes everywhere. I get it in my eyes and all sorts of things. But be very careful because you don't want uh, animals to eat it. So just stuff a little bit in. One of the most common things um, is people saying, oh, I can see the stuffing coming through my creation. Well, that's because you've overstuffed. So you want to be careful. You need to find a happy medium between overstuffing but making sure that you have enough stuffing in. So here he is. And I think that face doesn't look too bad. What do you think? Adjust his nose a little bit. You can move these bands how you want them. There we go. So that's going to be his little face and obviously we can put a scarf around that as well. So now we're going to do five rounds with white. And we're just going to do single crochets all the way around. So you just find your next stitch. And we just do single crochets and this time as I said we're using white. So this is the slip stitch and I'm going to go into that slip stitch and I'm going to move my stitch marker to that point there now and now I'm going to do my second round. Now if, you, if you're a bit confused about what round you're on, put some bands out, so two, three, four and five and as you're going around, this is my second round, so I'm going to take one from here and then I know that I have three more rounds to do or if, if you don't have the uh, pen and paper nearby to just jot down what round you're on or if you have a memory like a sieve like me <laughs>
Oops. And we are nearly back to the beginning. So here I'm going to go through and I'm going to use one from here. So I now know that I'm on round three. Move my stitch marker. And I have two bands sitting here, which means I have two rounds left. And let's keep going around. Single crochets. Somebody asked me the other day whether the uh, designs that I do are my own or whether I use crochet patterns or, or whatnot. No, I make my own designs up completely. I might look at a picture of something and think, yep, I can I can do that. And I, uh, I just think about how I want to create what I'm doing, whether it be I'm a groomy or whether it's uh, on the loom. And I, uh, I just... I guess come up with a design usually while I'm sort of playing with my kiddo she'll be, be doing something and uh, coloring or whatever and I'll be faffing around with some bands and a loom or a hook um, or after she's gone to bed but no I, I do not use other people's designs um, that being said there are a couple of collaborations that I've worked on with other people um, as you know, Happy Berry Crochet, and um, there was another lady who I worked with um, as well, converting crochet pattern to uh, loom bands. But one of the things that, uh, if you are going to be doing your own creations or tutorials, you should be very well aware of, is that you cannot just take somebody else's design, be it crochet or loom and just remake it you are breaching their copyright and it will result in some horrible things happening to you with your YouTube channel it could go to court um, and, and I speak from experience where somebody thought that I had um, used her design and in fact I had not and uh, it got very nasty and uh, did result in uh, nearly having court action um, so even though you might be using a crochet pattern and you're not using yarn you're using bands you are still using somebody else's design and that is copywritten to them and uh, in making a tutorial you're breaching that so be very very careful I can't stress that enough. It um, is a serious stress um, that I wouldn't want anybody to have to go through. Now, this is round four. Round five it's still going to be single crochet but then we're going to start our decrease So I'm at the end of round four, single crochet through here, and I'll move my stitch marker. I'm 
my last round of single crochet before we start doing our decreasing. Oops, look, see I nearly missed a stitch there. Let's go back and do that one first. And before we do our decreasing, we're going to make our arms and our legs because I want to put those on before we close up the bottom of our panda bear. So here I am, my last stitch, I'm going to go through, I'm going to do a single crochet and move my stitch marker to sit on this. And as I said, that could be a paper clip, an S clip, C clip, whatever. Don't worry if it looks a bit sort of odd shaped, because once you stuff it, it will look, um, It'll take on the shape of the stuffing, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. Now, for the arms and the legs, I've already made three, so I'll show you how to make one, and then you can make the other three. We're just going to do little arms and legs like this, okay? So, using black, I'm going to put my white bands away for a second. I'll move him out the way. Using black, you're going to put a single band on your peg of your loom and wrap it once and twice. And we're going to do a round little magic ring with five bands. So one, budge it around. Two, budge it around. three, budge it around, we'll get rid of the broken band, <laughs> four, and five, take your little magic ring off your loom and spread these around so that it's evenly spaced, move your loom out the way. Okay, as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four. Your fifth one is on your hook. Push your hook through the first. Make sure that you have a um, marker, stitch marker available. You're going to grab the first band, slide it through that first stitch, and do a single crochet and put your stitch marker on. Now, Instead of doing an increase in each of these stitches, we're doing one. An increase would make it get bigger. We just want it to come up. So find, that was your first stitch. And let's just make sure we're in the right spot here. Yes. So we're going to go through. One, two, three, four. This second stitch here. Because we've already done that first single crochet in this first stitch here. So find your second stitch and do your first single crochet, then you find the third stitch, single crochet. Now it does get tricky, especially working with black bands and you're working in a small area and it becomes quite difficult to find 
the stitches. So take your time and remember that you've got five little stitches around here that you're wanting to, to do. So I'm back at the beginning. This will be round number two. And I'm going to move my stitch marker here. Now I want five rounds, so I'm going to put four bands here because I've already done one. So here's my first stitch, my second stitch, my third stitch. my fourth stitch I'm back at the beginning for my fifth stitch and I'm going to take it from this pile here and I'm going to move my stitch marker let's do that again one two three, four, and back through the first one, oops, <laughs> five, and move my stitch marker. Now if you need to, you might find that you need to just sort of splay the top part open, just so that you can see where your stitches are a little easier. the beginning move my stitch marker I'm going to splay this out a bit so that I can see what I've got here now these I do not stuff um, they're actually quite solid without being stuffed so I think it's sort of overkill and my last one here and I'm going to go through and do a slip knot okay I'm going to take that out Make sure that it's not too tight, but I don't want it to come unraveled. Now, splay this out a little bit so that you can see where your stitches are, because what you're going to do next is go through, and that's my one stitch. I'm going to take a black band and I'm going to tie a slip knot on it, like this. Okay, I'm going to find my next stitch, here it is, and I'm going to tie a slip knot on that as well and I'm using these as anchoring bands really find another one here and I'll have four of these little anchoring bands like that okay so I've done that on each of them you can see I've got my little anchoring bands okay so with the little anchors that we've made what you're going to do is just gently untie one just a little bit so that you've got both loops there okay so here's your the two loops that you used position your arm where you want it to be and you're going to go through and drag both of those loops through okay so that's our first one we're going to position this so that one is at six o'clock one is at nine o'clock and we just did that one at 12 o'clock so the one that now is at nine o'clock 
you're gently going to undo just a little bit, go through a spot on your bear, put those two little loops on your hook and you're going to drag that through and place the 12 o'clock ones over the 9 o'clock ones. Alright, let's go to 6 o'clock and the 6 o'clock one we're going to just again gently now this one is trickier because it's the one that we've actually used to tie off that was our tie off band all right so there now if you if you need to use your stitch marker just to put where that is there to keep that from going all right so position remember this is at six o'clock which is pointing downwards so let's find a six o'clock spot grab both ends of your band bring it through and you want to make sure that you're going from these ones to the other so put your hook back through here and there is a fiddle factor to to this but uh, I think it's a little easier now I've only got one end of the band I want both ends there we go there's the other side there maybe not use the stitch marker hey <laughs> so go through where I want my six o'clock grab both ends of my band drag them through and then put that over there and then we'll do the same at the three o'clock position undo my band just a bit both sides of it here find where I want it to go through which in my case would be probably about here put both sides on my hook drag it through one over the other like that and now I'm going to find a spot on my on my bear I want to be able to tie this off now you're going to have to tie off inside your bear otherwise it's going to look really bad so push your hook through grab the two bands that you're left with and pull those through to the back side I think I'm going through the actual arm which is making it tricky so let's try that again grab your push your hook through the bear, grab the two bands that we were using to go round, they're here somewhere, here they are, there we go, so I'm going to put my hook back on, so we've just sort of gone round in a, in a circle, I'm going to go through another loop at the back here and I'm going to tie those off together with a slip knot like that. And so there is my little bear arm attached we can do the other side that's a little tricky but I think it's easier than when you suture all the way around I can I see that I do have a bit of a hole here but um, that's probably just because I pulled it a little bit too tight okay so I'm going to do the same I'm going to find my first spot and I'm just gently going to undo so that I have both ends of the band this is going to be my 12 o'clock, so I'm going to find a comparable spot here. I think that's probably, gosh, let's see, about here. So I'm going to grab the two ends of that band and drag through. Now work out where my 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock are. That's my next one is here this is my three o'clock I feel like it's a meeting this is my three o'clock meeting so I've just undone that little slip knot I want to push through a portion on the panda grab the two bands and drag it through and then one over the other so that's secure I'm going to find six o'clock here we go I'm going to just undo 
gently so that I have both ends of my band. I'm going to find a spot at six o'clock, grab both ends of the band on my hook, pull it through and again one over the other and then let's find three o'clock, here we go. Both ends of the band, find the three o'clock spot. I can see I only got one end of my band there. Come back here, drag it through. And now I'm gonna pinch those two the last two go through a spot on my panda and drag those through to the inside I have them on my hook I'm going to flip this over a bit so I can find a black band I'm going to just find one close close to me there's one right here I'm just going to go through that grab a black band and pull through with a slip knot like so. And let's hope that I have that arm in approximately the right spot. I think I do. Okay, so there's his two little arms are on. If you find an easier way of, of adding them, if you go around the outside with added bands, that's completely up to you. It's uh, your choice. I'm going to start doing my decreases now, again, with um, white bands put my hook back in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing a single crochet which is on my hook at the minute and then I'm going to do another single crochet so a single crochet, single crochet, decrease so that it doesn't sort of happen too quickly so single crochet, single crochet and then my decrease which is you have you go through your first one, your first stitch and then grab that second stitch on your hook as well and you're going to just join those two together like that and then we'll do a single crochet single crochet and a decrease 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 and I'm going to finish here there's a single crochet and I will move my stitch marker to that spot all right now at this stage what we really want to do is add our legs and we want them to be in a sitting position okay so I'm going to have them slightly in from the arms because I think if they sat out here it's going to look odd so I want them slightly in from the arms okay so I'm just going to stretch this out so I know where I want them and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the arms. I'm going to find a 12 o'clock spot or you can find sort of just two spots here and two spots on the other side. Okay and this is how we're going to attach the little legs. This one is almost coming apart so I'm going to start with this one here. Undo it just a little bit. Find the spot that I want to add grab my black bands and I want both of them not just one 
come on you and pull through. Let's do the same for the next one. <laughs> Here we go. And it's fiddlier, the smaller you're dealing with, the fiddlier it is, actually. So where do I want this one? I want this one to go probably about here. So I've gone through the, the bear and I'm now grabbing the legs. And I've only got one band and I want both ends of it. There we are, both ends. And I'm going to do one over the other like this. Let's do the next one. Go through a little part of the bear. Grab the two ends of my band for the leg, the little anchor, one over the other. And it probably would have been better to do this in white, but at least you're getting to see <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about and do the next one and I'm going to grab here pull it through both parts and that's going to be tricky there we go pull this one over and I'm just going to stretch them around until I get to a spot and you can tie off this way as well, you don't have to go to the back. You would grab a band from the front like this. That works too. Tie it off in a slip knot, nice and tight. And then go through the front. Grab the, I'm sorry, go through the back to grab the band at the front and pull it in so that it's like that. I do think it looks a little tidier but it does take some practice. Our little bear is going to sit like this. So you want to try and do the other side the same. The other way that I do it, and, and these are too small, if we were doing a larger bear, it would be easier. Um, there's a different way that I, I tie off, which is um, a little easier, but I think, uh, as I said, he's just a little too small to... Uh, the anchor bands don't go around. So I'm just going to undo one anchor band. Here we go. I'm going to hold both ends of the band. Come here. Get the other anchor bands out the way. <laughs> Position where I want it. I want it a little bit in from the, uh, from the arms. I'm going to find my spot that I want to go through and pull my black bands through like this. Now I'm going to have a look. I think I've gone too high. If you look, I've only gone this high on the first one. So let's try that again. Maybe I will go here. Hmm. Let's be careful about this because I don't want one leg, one leg up and one leg down. We'll do it here, I think. So, holding my two ends of the band. I'm going to go through I'll go through this spot here and grab those two ends one and two and bring it back. I guess if it doesn't if it doesn't look right we can always change it can't we? I'm going to undo this anchor band next and again I'm going to just pinch it with my fingers so I don't lose it and I'm going to go through here for this one and pull the two bands through nope only got one come on second band or second loop there we go Put the first pair over the second pair and move around to this spot undo pinch 
inch find my spot where I want this to be which is going to be probably about here drag through one over the other and then my last spot is going to be about here and again I'm going to find near where I started I want to make sure that I am tying off sort of at the same spot so I can join these together and do a slip knot and then go in from the back side of the bear grab the tie off band and pull back like so so I think that those are about in the right position and once he's stuffed we'll be able to know a little better also the bands will relax a little bit you'll find um, as well that's got caught on there so I'm just going to undo that now we're going to do a single crochet and a decrease all right so that was the single crochet that we start with so let's do a decrease and a single crochet let's move some of these black bands out of the way so I don't get them muddled up and a decrease single crochet now I'm going to move my stitch marker and I'm just going to hold it on here because all we all we're doing for this now is decreasing it doesn't really matter uh, when or where but I think if I go much smaller I'm not going to be able to stuff so I'm going to do my stuffing now and most of you know I use the polyfill polyester fiber fill it's um 100% polyester just use a little bit at a time it's very soft it's quite fibrous and one of the tricks about stuffing is to not overstuff you sort of it, it's a you'd have this tendency to overstuff things and um, if you do you will see the stuffing appear through the stitches of your crochet and uh, I mean obviously you're going to see a little bit but um, you don't want it to be so that all you can see is stuffing oozing through. That would be nasty. So I think that's about good for stuffing. I could possibly use a little bit more, but already you can see that the stitches are stretching. The stitches will relax. As I've mentioned, the stitches will relax, but I don't want to overstuff. So now all I'm going to do is just continue with my single crochet and decrease until I'm at a stage where I can do a slip stitch and a little knot. So that was a decrease. I'm going to do a single crochet. I'm going to take the stitch marker out. I don't need it. And we'll do a decrease. And we'll get rid of that nasty band. <laughs> Single crochet. Now I'm not giving up looming uh, to just do amigurumi. Please don't think that. I just had a few amigurumi patterns that I had been working on over the winter break while my little girl was home. And so that's why I've sort of been doing these for the minute but uh, I'm still doing my little loom figures as well so please don't fret that I've given that away I 
I think it's nice to be able to um, find multiple things that you can do with the bands. That's why I sort of investigated mural making, um, you know, and, and the Amagurumi and all the different things that we can do with loom bands. It's, uh, it's fun. Now I'm at the bottom here, so I'm just going to do single, um, I'm sorry, not single crochets, I'm just going to do decreases, because we don't want him to look odd. One more, and then I'll tie off. off you <laughs> take a single band and you flick it <laughs> and you do a slip knot one over the other pull it tight you're going to go through the inside of your bear up through the back side here and pull that tie off band back through your bear okay so here is your little panda now you might like to do the little red scarf that I did. Oh, we need a tail. He needs a tail. What am I thinking? Um, grab my loom. So here's my other one that we had here. So he the, the tail sort of helps him sit up a little bit as well. So um, let's do a little magic ring. Single black band. Wrap once. And twice. You're going to do five bands. One, two, three, four, rid of your loom, spread these around so that they're evenly spaced, go through the first stitch, you're going to grab a single band and do a slip stitch, okay, then on the other side you're going to go through so that you're opposite and we're going to do another little slip knot here like that and this is going to be his little tail and all you're going to do is find where you want to position it okay and you're going to go through one side and the other grab the black band and I'm just going to bring it through this through the center of this other side that I have here stretch over and then you're going to do the same for this other band all right you're going to go through the, from the opposite side and you're going to use the same the same holes that you used and pull that one up and over and that is going to be his little tail so that he can sit nicely like so if you want to do the little scarf, um, the little scarf is literally just a little red chain and um, I just did that with my hook. You take a single, wrap it around once, twice, three times and you do single bands. And I don't even know how many I did, let's have a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
and then I added this extra bit, so that's 27, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll do 27, and I'll show you why I did uh, two parts to it. That's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can do these any colour you like. You can make them multicoloured, rainbow coloured. 9, 10. That has to be more than 10. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 26, 27. Now the reason I only did 27 because as I wrapped it round his neck, I wanted to grab this end cap here and pull it through the end of my um, chain, like this. But then I don't want to end up having at the end here a knot that I then had to cut and tie. I thought that would look a bit manky. So I did the same again. I took a single band, one, two, three, so that it would have the same look. It would have an end cap on the end. So one, two, and you can make them a different color. Three, four, five, Seven. And if you just want it like that, that's fine. Eight. So how I joined these together, as you can see, I've gone in. That's where I tied it, but then this is where I have the knot. Okay. What you're going to do, you're going to take the first part of the hook of the extension, the first loop of your extension like this on your hook. Go through the two loops of the last chain in your scarf and then add the other loop to your hook so you have it like that you have this part this band on the outside of this you'll take your hook and drag that through you're then going to splay this open and flip the extension chain through it like that so that it forms a little knot but as I said the reason I did that was so that you had these little end caps on the end so you could make those little white bubbles on the end you can still pull this tighter this way here um, if you if you don't want it as as tight you can just have it looser whatever you like but I just felt that that looked better than having um, a band that you're just going to cinch together and do a tie-off band and snip and then you have these two ends sitting there. I didn't think that looked very nice. So there we go. There's our end result. Our little panda bear. I really hope you like him. He is fiddly. The smaller, I think, is more difficult than the larger bears. But I hope you enjoy making him. Take care. Bye-bye.